In this video, I thought it would be fun to revisit some of my most popular DIY projects and rate them. Basically tell you how they've held up, do I still love it, would I have done it differently? So let's go ahead and hop into some of the most popular ones that I've shared here on my YouTube channel. Not that I'm doing any of this right and it should be filmed. <laughs> If you're new here, I'm Lena. I'm a mom of three. A few years ago, we took a big risk and we purchased a property that needed a ton of work, a complete renovation. It was left unfinished. It hadn't been touched in a long time. It sat empty, but today we have made it flipping gorgeous. So let's revisit these projects. The first one I'm going to start with is the cottage house on the property. There was the original house. The earliest records I can find on it are 1960, but this thing was left basically untouched since the 1960s. So the first project I really did on the property was painting the cabinets in this kitchen. I'm going to rate this a six out of 10. I know I'm starting with a really low one, but let me tell you why it's a six out of 10. It's not that they didn't and it turn out really pretty and look better, but it was because the technique that I applied. I had originally stripped the cabinets because I wanted to keep them in a wood tone and just restain them, but about halfway through the project, I realized that the frames of the cabinets were veneer, so I couldn't strip those. So we had to pivot, we had to paint, the big mistake I made here was using an all-in-one cabinet paint versus priming it and then using an acrylic based paint. So they are chipping a bit. I still like the sage color that I chose, but I'm going to give those a six out of 10 just because of how difficult that project ended up being and that the paint is kind of chipping now and I wish I would have used different materials and maybe done a little bit something different with the hardware. The next project is the epoxy countertops in the cottage that we made to look like faux marble. And I am gonna give these a 10 out of 10. This project turned out so much better than I ever could have imagined. I just bought this kit thinking, hey, let's try to transform these countertops. We don't really have money to replace them. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, we'll place them eventually. So we used this all in one kit. I painted the countertops, then did the veining, then applied the epoxy. Now this epoxy resin is a little different than I think most epoxies that you just buy out there. It actually had no fumes. It was very easy to use. Now out of 10, they have held up great. And I haven't had any issues with them staining or chipping or anything like that. All right, moving on to the next project. It's actually behind me and it is my range hood. This might be my most controversial DIY project. People either love it or they hate it. But when we bought the home, the kitchen just didn't match like the actual house itself to me. I envisioned this kind of European farmhouse kitchen and I just wanted this big statement piece of a plastered range hood. So it is very statementy. If I had to change anything about this, I think I would have left off the corbels and just gone with more of a traditional Arcadian style range hood. The corbels, I don't know, just make it, it's already so big and the corbels just added a little more to it. So I'm gonna give it a, the backsplash behind the range hood. That backsplash, oh gosh, that wall is like a 10 foot wall. And and the backsplash was really maybe the third time I've done tile, but I wanted to really do it very professionally. So I give myself a high rating on how professional that I, I approach that tiling job. The tile itself is iridescent and it's beautiful. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10 just because sometimes I do worry that long-term am I going to love this? If I had to do it over again, I think I would do more of a stone veneer to kind of go with, again, that European countryside feel. But gonna give that backsplash an eight out of 10. The next project is taking builder grade cabinets and making them look like expensive custom cabinets. We transformed our dining nook into a butler's pantry. We were able to repurpose the expensive Thomasville cabinets that were in the kitchen where we put the range hood into the pantry. And so I, I used upper cabinets for the lower because it was very narrow, but to make them match the expensive ones, I found these like, I don't know, what would you call them? Panels, oh, um, a panel. And just put the panel on the builder grade cabinet and then painted them and they look so good. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. They've held up pretty well, but I do have to say that the 
panel is not made of wood so it could potentially ding easily or get little nicks in it if it's hit the wrong way or you know i don't know something sharp goes into it so i'm going to give that one a nine out of ten the next diy project is lime washing my bedroom walls. I love the way lime wash looks. If you're not familiar, it's an actual lime paint and it gives your walls this velvety kind of textured feel. I tested a lot of different colors and the color that I landed upon when I tested it at 100% of the tint, it just looked too dark for the room. So when I ordered it, I did it at 50% and I would say that it was just slightly too light. You can still see when you walk into the room kind of the lime wash and the texture, but it's not as, um, I don't know, it's not as intense as I would have liked it to be. So I'm gonna give that a seven out of 10 just based on the lime wash not being quite as dark as I wanted it to be, but still looks really nice and adds something to the walls and it's not just plain walls. I'm thinking about lime washing my dining room or my entryway, so stay tuned if you want to see that one. The next project, 10 out of 10, my favorite DIY project is my fireplace surround with an electric insert. When we bought this house, there was no fireplace. It was so bizarre to me that there was no fireplace. And once we finished our upstairs addition and opened up the wall with the stairs, it was time to finally do something with the living room, get it in its final state. Building out the fireplace was the last thing. I just imagined this beautiful plastered fireplace to tie into the plastered range hood. I reached out to archways and ceilings to help me create the frame and then I wrapped it in the drywall and applied the plaster and built the mantle. It turned out so beautifully. It is one of my favorite things. Every time I look at it, it just makes me feel happy. So I'm gonna give the fireplace a 10 out of 10. Another project that we did relatively early on was taking our mudroom and creating built-in lockers. Now, I found these just by happenstance. I was buying a bunk bed off of Facebook Marketplace and came across these two huge custom units and I thought, oh my gosh, I think I can make those work. I might have to cut them down, but that's exactly what I did. I just cut them down. Once we got them moved in, they were so big, but they were exactly what we were looking for. But because they were such a pain to move in, we decided to paint them inside the house. So I used just a furniture paint. If I had to do that over again, I would probably use more of a cabinet paint. I don't know if it was that paint or if it was the sealant that I applied afterwards, but now it's kind of getting these weird darkening spots. So I'm gonna have to touch that up. And I wish I would have put a little bit nicer hardware on them. I would give that project a eight out of 10. All right, the last one and probably my most popular DIY project would be painting all of the kitchen cabinets in the main house. Now, this was a feat and because it was, you know, the third time I was approaching paying cabinets, I really wanted to do it the right way. I took off all the door fronts. I didn't sand them. I did use liquid sandpaper. I primed them. I sprayed them. I changed all the cabinet hardware. I mean, it made such a difference in here, but I'm going to give this a nine out of 10 just because I have noticed a little bit of chipping on the cabinets, especially like we have the drawer pullouts and some of the drawers, I don't know when I put them back on, they kind of, they kind of rub each other. So I have seen some chipping of the paint and I, I'm not sure if that's because I didn't sand them. Um, but again, nine out of 10 totally transformed the space. It was completely worth it. If you enjoyed some of those projects that I referenced, you can find them all in the description of this video. Be sure to watch the next few that pop up and I have so many more DIY projects to come. I'm really excited to dive into them. I would love it if you would leave me a comment and share this with a friend and I'll catch you next time.